Hello? Hi, Mike Davis? Yeah. Hi, it's Steve. Oh, hey. I just wanted to give, have a little chat with you. All right. Because, um, you know, I got to thinking, um, you watched the Super Bowl last night, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, it was, it was awesome. Right. And, and, you know, I'm just, there's a spineless dude. I really, you know, I've never been in a fight. Like, I, I don't even know karate. I don't, you know, I don't own a gun. So I think we need to mix this up. I think me and you, we should, you know, go, go mug some people or, like, rob, rob a bank. Yeah. You know? yeah, I like, let's rob a bank, yeah. Let's get some guns, rob a, oh, I work at a bank, though. If so? we, we show up to my bank with, like, guns, I, I could get fired. That's true, uh, that's true. It's like, it's like that action would have, like, a reaction. Yeah, yeah, I, get, I mean, okay, okay. Well, what if we don't kill anybody? I, I might be able to keep my job then. Let's see if you don't right. kill anyone, reaction. All right, well, let me stop you right there because now you're on to something. Welcome to Now You're On To Something, a game show where we ask our contestants questions and the person that has the most insightful responses is declared our winner. Um, our first contestant is Mike Davis. It's good to be back. Uh, local vagrant. Uh, <laughs> well, we'll get to. And what's your name? My name is Matt Crefting. And I, I think you're a member of a band, is that correct? Yeah, I'm, I'm a sometimes member of Prana Bindu. Mm -hmm. Any other band? Oh, I've been in a lot of bands. I was in a band called The Believers. I'm in a band called Son of Earth. Mm. Uh, I do music under my own name, and I play with Prana Bindu when they ask me to. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. You, were, you played for us just earlier. I did. Yeah, that was, that was good. Thank you. It was rocking. All right. Um, uh, okay. It's very kind of them to let me sit in. Sit in? Yeah, with the band, because I don't really know what I'm doing. <coughs> oh, okay. So, I mean, I, I couldn't tell. What do you play? In, the, in that band? In that band. A Roland keyboard that uh, Gene sets up for me. Oh. And then he sort of shows me oh, where to cool. put my hands, and then I put them there. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like dubstep or? No. no I don't know what that kind of, I don't know what that sounds like. I don't know. I just saw it on TV, so. Um, <laughs> The, a rolling keyboard, I've heard that before. Those are really nice. The, I, I, I was a fan, you know? All right, all right, so uh, let's see what we hear. I wanna talk about thunder trunks? I think I, think I, got, I heard something that you have an invention called thunder trunks. Well, it's, still, it's in pre-production. It hasn't actually been put into the marketplace yet, but okay. it seems like a good kind of pant. Like uh -huh. sort of an adult version of sled pants, uh -huh. where like you have pants with a sled built into the back, and you can thunder down the mountain that way. Oh, I see. So it's kind of like sports equipment. Like yeah, you, you wouldn't want to walk around all day with it. Well, you could. I was also thinking about adding drum machine pads to the front, so that you could. You could oh, oh. Uh -uh. yeah. Or you could just like tape a rolling keyboard to the to the pants. And yeah. Just, like, Rock out. I'll you wouldn't slide. be able to bend your legs as well, so you'd yeah, have that's to, true. That's it would true. get a little awkward. Have to add a little hinge in the middle of the. <laughs> oh. um, I want. I brought up the thunder trunks because I wanted to talk about winkers. They're a type of jeans, <laughs> pair of jeans where the um, they're they they have different animals, but they like to have the eyeballs, the eyes at the uh, under tuck underneath the the buttock. So when you walk, the folds, I believe they're. Yeah. Cool. So when you fold, the eyes are winking. It's amazing. And you know, I kind of want to popularize them. I'm not wearing any right now. If I was, I'd be walking around showing you guys. But um, just wanted to let you guys know. Uh, everyone know that winkers are out there, and keep an eye out. You know, so to speak. All right. <laughs> so let's get down to the show. 
I'm going to ask you a series of questions, and I want you guys to just ramble on, rant about it. And when you have a good idea, I'm going to award points. Um, OK? So I think you guys are both aware of the rules. And let's say, all right. First question. Now, is it wrong or right to be a poet? Why or why not? Uh, I'm going to go with Mike on this one. If you asked that, like, you know, so many hundred years ago, I'd say it is completely right. But I think all the good poetry is already written. So people are just blabbering around like, oh, I felt bad today. I'm going to write a poem. So, you know, it's just negative energy. We, we don't need that negative energy anymore. So my answer is no, it is not okay to be a poet. I think you're wrong. But I want to let you, what do you think? I, I, I actually agree with that. Um, oh, whoa. <clears throat> well, I'm reminded of something that somebody said to me once that when we had been to, a, I read poetry that's been written in the last 2,000 years, and I go, <laughs> go to see poetry. But if a poet doesn't say something that would have flown 2,000 years ago, then hmm. I'm not interested. OK. So like, kind of like Jesus, like you're kind of down with the Jesus thing? That's like 2,000 years ago. Well, am I down with the Jesus thing? I mean, I, <laughs> is, I, mean I guess he wasn't a poet, so to speak. Um, I think it's fine to be a poet. You just have to do something that's OK, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It is okay to be a poet. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, Matt has awarded the points for that round. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Next question. You are at a grocery store and you can only buy three things, um, a week's worth of supply of these three things. You can't eat anything or drink anything else other than these three things. What are they? Um. Beer, potato chips, and toilet paper. You're going to eat toilet paper? You don't need anything else if you have beer and potato chips. That's true. Uh, wait, what kind of potato chips? It doesn't really matter very much. It depends on how much money you have, I would say. All right. Uh, I'm a fan of radishes. Um, nothing doesn't go with peanut butter. And, you know. Wait, nothing goes with peanut nothing butter? Nothing doesn't go with peanut oh. butter. So everything goes yeah. with peanut butter. All right. Uh, okay. Radishes, peanut butter. And you know, kind of feeling pepperoni. Kind of. That's a tie. Sorry. No. The points are negated. All right. All right. That was a good question, I thought. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we got here. Um, ooh, this is interesting. If you could have a girlfriend, um, let's say she's an 8 out of 10, what nationality would she be? <clears throat> 8 out of 10 looks wise, or 8, like, just in terms of overall greatness? Uh, oh, yeah, overall, you know, personality and looks, you know, whole package. What nationality would she be? Hmm. Well, I think that they should be American because then they would have a sense, like I do, of how miserable it is to be an American. And I think that shared misery is a really good foundation for a relationship. So I'm going to go with <clears throat> American, even though I don't like myself. Boring or answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right. I'd like have this. to go with, you know, French Canadian, get, you know, best best of the worst. Oh, man. So I always feel dominant in every way. Cuz, you know, being American, we're just better than French and or Canadians. Save in the realm field of a uh, maple syrup. I'd go with Matt on this one. Oh. I don't French You're Canadian. fan you're fan of maple syrup, aren't you? I do I do I do like good maple syrup, you know, but, you know, here in Vermont, we make maple syrup on the rig. All right. Um, let's see. 
This is, this is a pretty exciting round, I think. I think we had some pretty good answers. So, so. Matt's in the lead two to one. Or wait, three to one. So, because you guys tied. All right, let's see what we've got here. Um, Technical difficulties. All right. All right um, okay. This is kind of interesting. You're in an airplane, and there's, and all the like the red lights go off and stuff, and they say like, you know, we're losing altitude, blah blah blah. All those little masks come down. Um, what do you do? What do you do? Right? What, you know, and you're facing imminent death on an airplane. Me first? Yeah, yeah, you first. Well, first thing you have to think is, that, well, this is fine, because there's no point in panicking if you're already going down. And then I think, well, what should I do? I know what will happen is that I'll expect that little bag to inflate, even though I know it, on one level it shouldn't. And then what I'll, bag? That little bag that sticks out of the, the oxygen thing. Uh, they always tell you that it won't inflate. But then I immediately picture myself panicking because I'm expecting it to inflate. Well, why, why is it so not supposed to inflate? It's not supposed to inflate. What's is, is you're supposed to breathe in it? Right. And if it inflates, then that means that you... I, don't, I, don't, it, it, I thought it was supposed to give you oxygen or something. It is. And that's supposed to come through the little yellow bit, and then it's got this sort of bag. This thing looks like a doggy bag hanging off the edge. Is that where your bro breath goes? Or? I don't know. I've never used one. I just oh. This is the thing. I'm thinking about my hypothetical reactions oh, okay. to the situation. You know, I've never flown in an airplane. That makes sense that you wouldn't know that the bag is not supposed to inflate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, never I was in a lot of airplanes last week. And really? I don't like it very much, other than I like reading. Mm -hmm. But I can do that on my couch. Mm -hmm. But anyways, I think it's fine if you go down in an airplane, because there's nothing you can do about it. It's, mm -hmm. Somebody else will be sad. But well, you seem pretty calm. I'm going to just <laughs> award you the points. <laughs> Mike doesn't have to answer. All right. Um, <clears throat> This wraps up the first few questions of our show. Matt's the um, clear winner. Um, and thanks for watching. Now you're onto something. Stay tuned. to our second half of our show. But now we're on to something. We had a, a riveting first round. Um, Matt is our winner. Um, Mike Davis, you know, went out to the street again. Um, uh, we have now another member of Prada Bindu. Is it, did I say that right? Prana Bindu. Okay. I just watched The Devil Wears Prada, so. <laughs> Sorry. You're Todd. Yes, um, I am. What instrument do you play? Uh, I play drums, percussion, and bass clarinet. All right, cool. So, what, what's your preferred instrument? Um, not really preferring any one oh. over the other. I like I like being able to switch around. Okay, that that's makes what's fun for me. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. cool. Mm, do you just play guitar? Or no, you, do you just play the Roland keyboard? In this unit, yeah, that's all. But I in play. general, like, what else do you play? In oh, general? I play tapes. Mostly, and uh, I sing. Used to sing a little bit, and I sort of gave that up. Well, like 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 tapes, like lo loops. Sometimes I make loops. It's just mostly cassettes, mm -hmm. and then I put stuff on the cassettes and play them against each other. Oh, okay, that's cool. I've heard that some of that. It's like noise. That's cool. That's cool. Have you guys heard of the disintegration loops? Oh, yeah. yeah, William Basinski. Yeah. That was yeah, pretty sweet. Cool. Yeah, that yeah, was really good. I just found my copy of Disintegration Loops Volume 3 yesterday while I was going through piles of CDs, actually. 
And I did not buy the $400 9 LP DVD <laughs> 12 CD <laughs> box set, no matter who it benefits, <laughs> what charity. <Yeah. laughs> Have you guys heard of the, the MERS box? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I saw a guy yeah. online who had, had, like, had a copy. <laughs> I know somebody who has one. 250 CDs or something like that. Okay. Have you heard of the Merit's car? No. There's an edition of one Mer uh, Mercedes with a Merit's Bow CD stuck in it, and you can't turn the volume down. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> I, I've heard there's like a record that's called, like, I don't know what it's called, but it's, it's broken in half, and like... Someone owns one half and someone owns the other half. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a friendship bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's get down to questions because I mean, this is good. But Okay. Um, uh, let's start off with the most boring question. What do you guys think of fracking? Um, uh, you know, it's supposed to pollute the water or something. And uh, I don't know, but it also makes a lot of money for people. Money's good. So, Todd, what do you think? Well, I think that fraternities are really, you know, I really think they should stop the fracking. It's way too much of it. And I think it's really caused, you know, a lot of social conditions that aren't really, really good. Uh -huh. um, and I think the, that kind of violence, you know, contained within the college environment is <laughs> really not productive. So, yeah, I'm not down with fracking. Fracking? Yeah. <laughs> Like fratting? All right. <laughs> what do you think? I really like uh, Robert Frack's work with King Crimson, but I like the Frackertronics records better. Um, I think that he sort of went into a dip in the middle with exposure. Although, I mean, there's things I like about that record too, but the Frackertronics are, I think, the, the pinnacle of what he did. So I'm pro fracking. You're pro fracking? That's, that's something else. All right. All right. No, I'm not going to give you points. Okay. <laughs> Todd's got the points. It doesn't seem fair to me. <coughs> me neither. <laughs> Who's the host? All right. Just roll it. <laughs> sorry. All right. Um, all right. Sorry. Okay, second question. Let, you know, let's calm down. Let's, let's, let's just, you know, lighten up a little bit. A little fun here. Now, do you guys ever think about death and your own mortality? Why or why not? Uh, yeah. Almost constantly. Mm. And why? I wish I knew why, because then I might be able to do something to stop my constant thinking about death. But um, I think it's a good thing to be aware of, you know? Now you're onto something. <laughs> we should all be afraid of death. All right. Um, I'm confronted by death every day when I open my refrigerator, mm. and it, it puts me in a different mindset that makes me see the here and now, so I'm actually comfortable with thinking about death, because mm. I, like I say, I see it on a regular basis. Cottage yeah. cheese, mm -hmm. dairy products of various kinds, old produce, everybody's yep. got to go sometime. Mm -hmm. I kept mm -hmm. a dead bird in my freezer for years. I would yeah. if I had one. Mm. I... Uh, I had a dead squirrel in my freezer for a while. But Did you cook it up? No, I, don't, I think it's still in there, actually. Makes good burgoo. <laughs> uh, my mom threw my dead bird out. Yeah? Mm. Did you yell at her? Mm-hmm. OK. All right. Well, I would, I would have thrown a fit. All right. That was a tie, by the way. <laughs> that was a, both had good points, because there's a lot of death in the fridge, and we also should be thinking about death on a near constant basis. All right. um, let's see what we've got here. Um, UFO abduction. Hmm. Do you think aliens exist? Um, do you think people, I think some of the people that talk about being abducted were actually abducted, or are they just like, you know, crazy heads? Asking me? Yeah. Well, personally, I, I, I'm actually dead serious about this. I have missing time. Mm. And I really have never been able to account for it. It was when I was in college where I left someplace and arrived after all my friends and roommates were home hours, several hours afterwards. And I have no memory of why I, I missed that amount of time. Mm. So I guess I'd have to say I do. 
hmm. believe in aliens. And also, I think that there's things that were built in, in, uh, in early, early human history that, are visible, that make patterns from space at a level where a, a person probably would not perceive it just from the ground. So. Like the Mayans or the Egyptian? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think I saw that, like the History Channel or something. Well, there's, I mean, there's a lot of stuff with sacred geometry that's at a scale that's so big that it makes you wonder if it's something that really is human-generated. I'm, yeah, I'm down with that. That's pretty cool. Um, when I was in college, I had, I had a big problem with Xanax, and I had a lot of missing time as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, what do you think about aliens quickly, just very quickly? Uh, this is the space age, and we are here to go. All right. Uh, Todd's a winner. Uh, congratulations, Todd. Oh, thank you. Wow. Yeah. Well oh, done. So sorry. You know, stay here for your prize. Both were very great contestants. Um, thank you all for watching. Um, and so Travis, our winner, and um, at the end of every show, we, we always have a fabulous prize. So let's bring the prize out. It's a mystery to me. Let's see. And... It's a match. Um, oh, you, maybe you it's really a special match. Um, well, let's light it and see. All right. Here you are. Thank you. Congratulations on winning. Old school light. This is a great show. Yeah. Be careful. All right. Now, thank you all for watching the show. This was another amazing installment. Now we're on to something. I'd like to thank all our guests and uh, Prana Bindu for coming around, playing music. It was really great. Hope to hear some more. And we are out of here. <laughs>